And I'm joined now by Joseph Humeyer. He's with a global think tank called Center for a Secure and Free Society. Welcome back to the broadcast. Thanks, Susan. It's a pleasure to be here. So we've heard many times now a statistical dead heat, but it looked like Kuczynski had taken a slight lead uh, yesterday, I guess, in the polls. Right. But what is it that, that um, tightened this race? Well, uh, it, Fujimori, uh, after the end of the first round, uh, back at the end of March, had a bit of a 20-point lead. Obviously, some of that was going to get reduced just by the diminishing of candidates. But I think what hurt her in the last few weeks, essentially, was charges of corruption that had been levied by different media outlets from uh, members of her team being involved with drug trafficking and other type of money laundering operations. And so you saw about a five-point drop in the last week that put them in that statistical dead heat going into the runoff this, uh, today. In addition to that, she's always going to be living in her father's shadow, who's in, in jail on human rights and corruption charges. She says she would not pardon him. Uh, if she is elected, can she overcome this? She's still relying on many of his, uh, his cronies for well, advice. Correct, Susan, but it, it's also a positive for her. It's a positive and a negative. Obviously, there's a negative uh, stigma to his presidency. It's affected her to some degree in certain of the uh, southern areas and maybe some of the, the city centers. But in the north, her, her popularity comes from her father. Her father was always very popular in the North, and that base of support that she's gotten has come from her last name and, 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 and the legacy of Alberto Fujimori. So it's a positive and negative, and I think she has to learn how to balance that uh, to not make the negative stigma affect her, but to keep her base of support uh, popular in the North. Mm -hmm. What is it about Kuczynski? I mean, he's, he's up there in his years. Well, interestingly enough, he, he's probably not your stereotypical candidate in Peru, right? He doesn't look Peruvian. He doesn't have a Peruvian name. But a U.S. citizen. He's a U.S. citizen, exactly. But I think what Pablo Chinsi represents is kind of a, a rejection to the left, the rejection to kind of the Fujimori policies of the past. And I think in that sense, he's getting a, a coalesced support that's coming from different groups, leftist groups that, that don't want to see uh, uh, Fujimori become president. And he's getting support from pro-free market groups that want to see, you know, continue liberal policies in Peru. South Americans, as you know, or countries, I should say, have been moving away from the left-wing left -wing governments. Um, how do you see Peru in the next well, decade? Well, I mean, that's already clear. I mean, whoever wins, whether it's Fujimori or whether it's Pablo Kaczynski, that's already a vote uh, away from the left, away from the current policies of the current government in, in Peru. So that's already moving in that direction. I see Peru right in the line with the Argentinas, the uh, referendums in Bolivia, the the, the assembly votes in, in, in Venezuela. There is a tide that's sweeping through Latin America, but the fact that this tide is coming doesn't necessarily mean the policies are going to be made into practice. Even in Argentina, we've seen recently, uh, very surprisingly, the Argentine government has interfered in the OAS uh, uh, trying to be declaration against Venezuela. That wasn't expected uh, from a country that moved away from that kind of policy in, in, in the campaign trail. So we're, we, it's not guaranteed that it's going to happen with Peru, but I do think we're going to look at probably more pro-growth policies and a little bit different from what we've seen in other countries. What do Peruvians want right now? I, I think the main theme in Peru is they want to stop corruption. And that's the biggest problem in Peru. Uh, th there have been significant growth in Peru over the last decade. And frankly, Peru has been one of the you know, success stories when it comes to the, the economies of the countries. However, with that growth in the economy has also come the growth in corruption and the growth in drug trafficking. And most Peruvians are feeling that. And they want that to stop. And that's, I think, the big theme that's going to play out in this election. Alrighty, Joseph Humeyer, we thank you. Thank you, Susan.